Hey there everyone and welcome to the video. So Saint Tro has been showing off gameplay pretty sparingly recently. We've had a 23 minute video from Eurogamer and a 7 minute video from IGN. In this video we're going to be covering the 7 minute IGN video as I think that'll be the easiest one to cover in the time frame I've currently got to do this. And we're going to take a more subtle and rather swift approach to this as I have a 23 minute video which is going to cover quite a lot of the same bases that I have to go through eventually in the future. That one's going to be a bit more edited and I'm going spend a bit more time with it trying to actually analyze everything in it and give you a full-on analysis and breakdown of that one in this one however we're just going to sit here and watch it together and i'm going to generally just commentate over what i'm seeing spot out anything that i think is important for you guys to see and kind of just have a mini breakdown in this one i want to just quickly say a thank you to all the support we've been getting recently and that if you are looking for saint Row content fairly frequently I am the supplier of such, so make sure you are subscribed because I do my best to keep everyone updated with new Saints Row news and post on old Saints Row content. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. So here's the video. As you can see, it's around seven minutes. I also was just informed whilst I was literally getting ready to do this part of the video that there is another video that's about 17 minutes long to go through. I'm probably just going to leave it to this video and the Eurogamer one though, as those are the ones I really want to cover. Any other gameplay out there, I may post my thoughts on it in my Instagram if you want to follow that or maybe on a community tab. I don't really feel the need to sit there and decipher every single video that's current, like talking about the same topic. So um, yeah, we're going to this short one and then get into a longer, more thought out one in the future. So anyway, let's continue. Okay, first thing I noticed, the flame punch, that's pretty awesome. You can also see the ammo drops there, uh, pretty cool. Also, at the start, he says, there you go, fucker, or something. Um, that's pretty nice. That That's uh, quite aggressive language. Um, you know, something we like to hear in a good old Saints Row game. And also, I want to just say the visuals look fucking fantastic in this game so far. So, here we have uh, the sniper rifle scope. It looks pretty cool. But as you can see, all the enemies, when the target... When, when, like, the mission goal is take out these enemies, they all have these little radius um like logos above their head kind of like we do in saint the third with a little more information with the meters and how far away they are i quite like this um it's a nice new design it looks cool so uh you know i'm a fan of that having watched roughly 50 minutes of saints row gameplay i'm encouraged by one thing i want to say before we get into this this guy gives a lot of his opinions and i do respect his opinion i think it's important to listen to it obviously but i want to just say he hasn't played the game he's seen the gameplay just throwing that out there same as me so he's just as informed as i am really although probably a bit more informed as he's seen more gameplay what i've seen volition's reboot of the series looks a lot of fun filled with the wackiness carnage and humor you so as you can see then the Y popped up that's to dive into cars i think it's so you can like hijack vehicles from that and also you can bounce off people to keep a boost there's also quite a tunnel like a cool little tunnel here probably something we can explore later on there's freckle bitches as you can see which is pretty cool i think there's going to be a few locations of this around the map and also the new mission icon which looks like it'll have a personalized icon depending on what mission or criminal venture i'm not sure what this is that you are doing you'd expect it feels comfortably familiar but with enough new ways to play to make it so um that's the new riot shield uh pretty cool i can see that there is no swap vehicles there is police vehicles and i think there's probably going to be a higher tier of military vehicles kind of like we have in the third game not just seem like a retread of what's come before and promises to be a welcome throwback to an era when playful urban so here you can see the, the weapon wheel, and I know what a majority of these are, so we're going to go through it real quick. So obviously there's challenges, which is get idle double kills. So those will be popping up underneath your weapon wheel. I quite like this. So we have punches, idle's bad, the one with the lights on. You may get this after beating the idols, or perhaps you get it after doing a certain mission with the idols. Perhaps the one where you rescue Kevin, which we're definitely going to get into shortly. We have the pistol shown off in the Game Informer gameplay, the MAC-10, some form of AR that I'm not sure why they switched the locations around. I would much prefer to have the AR there and a shotgun there, but it's whatever. Then we have the shotgun that we've seen in most of the gameplay. We have a grenade launcher and satchel chargers. It's come before and promises to be a welcome throwback to an era when playful urban open world games were a much more common occurrence. So I've seen this cutscene here already because I've watched this once before. So obviously I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I like this cutscene as I think it's relatively grounded and I think it's something people need to see. They show off some more cutscenes later that I really like. All the cutscenes shown off in this video specifically, I love. What can I say? The world is full of uninteresting people and I'm not going to be one of them. 
The first thing that caught my So as you can see there, Eli goes, the world is full of non-interesting people and I don't want to be one of them. I like that, you know, it's the, the boss and Eli maybe sharing a more serious moment whilst gearing up to do a bit of a heist, you know, it's not completely, you know, dark and, and twisted and sad, like it's not a really Saint Row 2 story, but it's not Saint Row 3 wacky, it seems to be, as they've stated, a healthy balance, which gives me a little bit of faith that the overall story will go down this whole serious uplifting tone where it's like they start out as nobodies and slowly, you know, want to be more and eventually become more. I would quite like that as a story, but as you'll see later, I like where the cutscenes go with this, but that was a relatively short one. My attention was the huge emphasis placed on customization. Everything from your playable... So they tried to uh, go past that very quickly, so I'm going to try really hard to get the screenshot, but if you see right here, in case I can't uh, grab the screenshot here, this is a fairly gangster outfit, I can't lie. We're going to try and uh, screenshot it here. Right there. So as you can see, this attire is very much reminiscent of the earlier Saints Row game. So for everyone wondering, you know, are we ever going to have any more gangster attire? Well, here you go. This guy's wearing a little bandana here. He's all purple. He looks very Saints Row 1, might I say. For what people like to say about this game's customization and it being wacky, there are grounded options. And obviously I knew this, but it seemed a lot of people didn't. So but there you go. There is an image that any OGs should be at least slightly happy at. Everything from your playable boss, a huge range of vehicles, plenty of vehicles there we could talk about, but I think we've seen it all from the customization thing. Designs. Car customization in particular looks substantial, with everything from paint jobs to neon underglows available. I'm trying not to speak about car customization or customization in general in this video because I did a ton of videos on the customization trailer, which was specifically designed for customization, so it kind of makes no point. Of me just sitting there and talking about customization once again. The character creator is also extensive, giving players the option to create just about anything. This is stuff we know. We all know how good imagine. the customization is, you know. And I have to say, I quite like how the wings were behind phone app uh, the, the, the character there. Cosmetic surgery known to man. In a weird way, it reminded like me right of here, the wings and Halo, like the the, the Saint from Saint Row Two. I love that. Backstory you've made up in your head to take control of. Plenty However, of options. The setting is less Sim City and more Sin City. The world of Saints Row is a fictional. Hearing this guy call the new map Sin City is very reminiscent to Saints Row One. If you have the Saints Row One, um, I think it's either the box art or maybe a manual that says uh, "Sinners Welcome" or something. I fucking love the fact he called that Sin City, and that gave me a little bit of nostalgia to the early Saints Row games. Depiction of the American Southwest, and looks colourful and bustling with light. The map does look gorgeous. Look at that colour, man. A well-observed riff on Reno, Nevada, is a perfect example of this, as little vignettes play out as you stroll down. So, um, one thing I want to state is, there's a decent amount of peds here. Now, I'm not saying it's full of peds, but, I, you know, it's not an unsettling amount i think a lot of people were worried about heads but to say that there's a decent amount of heads all interacting with one another as well i quite like that on the street a band might start playing out one thing i do have and it's a little concern is the draw distance i'm seeing cars pop in back here um it's something i noticed earlier on uh, i forgot to mention it but the, the, the draw distance doesn't seem fantastic however from what i'm seeing the further away cars do transform into the closer cars, so it's not like they just fade in and out of existence. They seem to do, nowhere, like, travel well, into being the real cars eventually, but it does seem quite close. Or annoy the locals. So, as always, now, this is my favourite cutscene I've seen so far. This is the most grounded cutscene we've seen for Saints Row. So, before we get into this, this cutscene is going to be Kevin, after maybe going to a workout or something, um, having a gang come and try and take over him and kidnap him as we've seen in the first mission I love this cutscene and it really gives me a more grounded feel for the game It's this mix of semi-realistic setting and knowing silliness that made the Saints Row games what they were Distinct sandboxes where anarchic behavior is not only I love that uh, this guy described it perfectly totally though by the way Saints Row fits somewhere in between the second and third of the original series See, now, this is not Volition saying that. That's someone who's seen the gameplay saying it fits in between that, which gives me a bit of hope, okay? Not quite as dark as two, but not as off-the-wall bonkers as the third. I'm okay the with that. the conversations I heard in cutscenes and the way the members of your gang spoke to one another, I was getting Big Watch Dogs 2 vibes. See, now, I know a lot of people are going to see Big Watch Dogs 2 vibes. I can guarantee you, with, like, 99% certainty, he said that mainly just because of the characters being a bit younger. I know everyone's going to panic in here. <gasps> Watch Dogs 2 vibes! Ah! He's not talking about the story, he's talking about how the characters interact in each other, which is this whole, 
you know, that they're friends, okay, in this game. They're less of a street gang, at least at the beginning. And I think they're more, like, friends who form a gang. So they're definitely going to have the whole, like, humour between them vibe. Something I'm sure will split people, but there's a big fan of Ubisoft San Francisco based. I was also a big fan of Watch Dogs too, so this doesn't worry me personally, but I know a lot of people will be panicked about it. That's that whole seriousness with humour thing I like, although that, that cutscene is not hilarious. That appears to a much more rural setting than you might expect. Large swaths of desert punctured with pockets of civilization fill the map. It is it gorgeous, man. This map too. is actually fantastic, I have to say. You fly by. These large open areas look set beautiful. to be where Saints Row's vehicles shine, with fully revamped driving mechanics which borrow from familiar favourites. I love Games that. Games from the mid-2000s were never shy of taking successful gameplay quirks and dropping them I couldn't agree with that more. He, he said there, game from the mid-2000s always kind of basically just dropped in and out features from other games. You know, a game would just borrow features feature from other franchises to make their game better and now i know a ton of people will go well that makes them unoriginal they're not talking about the overall game they're just stealing from you just features that they think will improve the overall product of the current game i love the idea that saint row has gone this game developer has got a really cool thing going on why don't we borrow it and make it saint row in its own way and i don't mind that as long as it's not like a rip-off which i haven't seen anything that's directly a rip-off here um, I couldn't blame them in one bit for wanting to just take a similar thing from a game. And that legacy continues here. Side swiping into other cars conjures flashbacks of burnout and sleeping PS2. dogs. While ejecting from a speeding car, deploying a wingsuit, and that looks fantastic. Another, I ain't gonna lie. Staple of just cause. Just I've cause, yeah, we've heard that comparison. The future style hoverboard. One thing Saints Row has always benefited from is its vast range of unique weapons. I agree. And that's no different here. I've seen guns that fantastic. shoot bullets through walls. We know there's paper, tons of unique weapons. I mean, look at that list. And that's for one pistol. Hands. And that's My just visual mods. Buster, so I'll make the pistol scene completely different no matter which one you pick, but that's for one gun, that's insane. This is that weapon we saw in the 84 questions. I, I love that there is like interactable objects that you can shoot to cause damage and, and issues for gangs, so um, as you saw he shot the car there, I love that, there's barrels that kind of are highlighted that let you know you know you can shoot this and it'll cause a big explosion and i love that it's turning a simple pistol into a quick fire machine pistol with the click of a button as you'd expect the action and violence is all very cartoony it looks fluid too <laughs> i love that i'm sorry i've seen that like three times and i think that's so amusing that's the uh saint three style hijacking of course car surfing I love this whole car surfing thing while shooting. Some taking several shots in the head to take death. Bullet spongy, a complaint I've heard from quite a few people. Now, I'm going to tell you honestly, okay? And I know that this will make people a lot mad. I am not that affected by bullet spongy. I started with a third game, and I'd say that game was quite bullet spongy. As long as the SMG is a bit more like damaging than it was shown in the game format, every other weapon to me hasn't seemed too bullet spongy where I'd be annoyed, personally. Down, and it's often completely ridiculous, but that's always been part of Saints Row's charm. Where the fuck is Kevin? That's what I'm saying! That, where the fuck is Kevin? I'm kidding. But seriously, that is quite, you know, I wouldn't call it Saints Row 2 time, but I wouldn't call it Saints Row 3. It's the 2.5 split we've been begging for. I really think that the story is where the 2.5 is going to come into play. Of course they want the gameplay to edge towards Saints Row 3 with a depth of 2, because that's the wacky gameplay people find enjoyable. It's the story where they want the 2.5 split, like, perfectly. And honestly, I'm seeing it from the cutscenes I've seen in this. The where the fuck is Kevin thing, and then towards the end there's another cutscene that shows Kevin being, like, kidnapped. I love it personally that I can really see the split now, and it's making it easier to defend and kind of understand where the team at Volition are coming from. I always kind of expected them to keep the story more grounded whilst keeping the gameplay wacky, because that's kind of the 2.5 I was expecting. And from what I'm seeing, I'm getting that, and, and I like that. Like, a bar fight after unlocked. going, where the fuck Some is Kevin, is fairly like gangster, man. Express, in which you shove a grenade into an enemy's mouth and launch them at one of their friends. You actually shove it into their pants. Incorrect. I'm kidding. But you do not put it in the pants, so come on, man. As well as skills and Okay, let's have a look here. So this is the perk system. Um, I think that this is something we need to speak about. So, in the article that Tom Henderson uh, wrote about, he spoke about this, and I want to go through them. So, 
Here is where you will buy your perks. Now, these perks cost your money. Another reason for currency, one thing I hated about Saints Row uh, 3 and 4 specifically, is money meant nothing once you had your weapons upgraded, basically. This is going to be more perks and more reasons to spend your money. I personally love that. Perks that let you tailor your style further. There's real variety in the enemies, too, with each rival gang having their own fighting styles, units, yeah. and mini bot. Each gang having their own fighting styles. Just thought that's something to point out. Um, I don't know if he means melee styles there, kind of like two and one, but I kind of hope he does. Wait, no, just two, just two, sorry. From what I've seen, activities... This is very reminiscent of GTA 5, where you can blow open the doors to take the money. I love this. I love the fact that the world is interactable, and I can come across random things and just do them. This reminds me very much of AOM's best point, in my opinion, which is that you can kind of drive around and never have nothing to do. Is a pretty standard open world fair. Randomly generated discoveries, like blowing the doors off of a... One thing that I didn't particularly like there is how fast the thingies fade away. But I imagine that that is an alpha thing, just to make sure the game runs stable for people to do it before they've had any sort of optimization fixes. An armored van to get the cash inside, provide moments of distraction, plus there are more scripted side missions. Main missions... Scripted side missions, love that. It means that the side missions will feel a bit more higher quality... Uh, opposed to them just being like activities essentially kind of like Saint row fours uh, side missions to kind of just go here kill these um it should be a bit more strict and, uh, scripted and have more to do in them so as you'd expect from an open world of this kind a lot of car chases firefights and the occasional big explosive again moments. this map just For looks example, gorgeous borrowing man a heavily weaponized helicopter to destroy a rival gang's facility before landing on the roof and infiltrating further increasing your grip on the city then there's the modes which abandon story. I love this. I'm loving what I'm seeing so far, if I'm being honest. I've definitely had a few issues from what I spotted, but those are mainly just small concerns. The rest of it seems it's great. It's in its purest form and makes no apologies about it. Taking down other gangs looks like it'll take up most of your time. Here you can see a few rewards. You get a Jim Rob statue and Jim Rob crew outfit. So it looks like this is how we're going to be unlocking our customization things. So, you want your gang customization to look like Jim, Rob, or whatever his name is. Um, you just have to do this. And if you want the statue for your HQ, you go and do this side content. Rewarded for side content. I love that. Plus, early income returns. Plenty of cash. You seem to be getting quite a decent amount of cash for the stuff you do. So, I imagine the cash is definitely going to have a big influence in this. And we're going to have more cash than ever in this game. Time in Saints Row, though, as you gradually complete missions to increase your influence over the map by fulfilling the 14 separate business ventures available. It on looks your good, table. it really does. Each like, I know people want to complain, but I'm happy with everything I'm seeing right now. Modes, such as Saints Row Classic Insurance Fraud and customization options unlock as you progress through these objectives, too. There are also collectibles to find around the world, too, some of which can be used to redecorate your church base. Further driving home the point of Saints Row It looks good, again. Crib customization. It's not perfect, it's not exactly Saints Row 2's level from what I've seen, but it looks good. Also, one thing I wanted to point out there, if we just go back, it looks like that your gang members, you will just spot her in the HQ, which is something I actually really wanted. In... Saints Row 3, specifically, you can just never find any of the gang members. Even in the, the first and second game, you just can't find the lieutenants around anywhere. And it was always a pet peeve because it removed the immersion. But in this game, it looks like um, you're able to just walk into the base and see them chilling around. You have Joe Cola in here as well, they'll reference Saints Row 3. And also, I think Kevin has the uh, heyday shoes, which is pretty cool. There's a lot going on in Saints Row then, and all of it will be fully playable in drop-in and out co-op. As you saw briefly there, there's a little co-op logo to show where the co-op partner is at all times. Two, whether it all comes together to make for a and you can pick up your co-op partner if he's in a car. I'm loving this. Great time before its August 23rd release date is hard to know, especially as I'm yet to actually play it. From what I've seen so far, though, I'm hopeful. Saints Row is looking like a fun throwback, and it does look good. Crossed, it feels exactly like that. For more on Saints Here's the cutscene I want you to all watch. So after being game, kidnapped by the idols, you can see he's trying to just shoot some people and, and protect himself. But no, this leader of the idols, the lieutenant, kidnaps Kevin. And that's where our mission takes us in the game informer video. So from what I saw there, it, it looks very good. That's my honest thoughts. And I know people will disagree. But seriously, it looks good. I'm happy with what I've seen there. And I know I know a ton of people are going to be unhappy with some of the things he said. Or some of the things they've shown. But for me, 
which is, you know, just my perspective, it's just my opinion, okay? From what I've seen here, it's done nothing but get me even more enthusiastic about the upcoming game. There were some elements of it that made me a little nervous, to say the least. For example, the draw distance was a little bit of a concern, and I think I mentioned a couple other things that I kind of was just speaking about there. Uh, for example, the weapons being in a different order, you know, small issues that won't really bother me too much in the game. But from what I've seen, it looks good. That's my honest feeling. Like, this is the shorter one, so there's not much point in me really rambling much more on. But I'm happy with what I've seen. Anyway, if you want to keep updated on Saints Row News, make sure you're subscribed. I'm going to have a video on the longer one very shortly, which will have plenty more information for us to go through, which will be very fun to dissect. Anyway, I'll catch you all later. Keep an eye out, because I have another Central 3 video coming out soon. That you're going to love it, I just know. Anyway, I'll catch you soon.